OK. So welcome to the class. And I have a couple of to make. Um, so that first of all. So first of all, congratulations to the winners of Homework 4. So there were a couple of notable submissions. And since we told people that they can team up in teams, well, here are the top three teams. So first of all, big shout out to Andrew, Andrew Ping, Andrew Tan, then team number two and team number three. So let's congratulate them. Now, there's something funny about the submission in team number one. So they didn't submit as a team, but there were two submissions. And one was by using ensembles of trees and the other one using multi a single multilayer perceptron. So, um, the second submission is really the one that did what they should have done. But in any case, I mean, you guys did an awesome job. Um, so all of those three teams will get prize money, AWS credits. May I suggest that if in team number one, actually Andrew Tan did most of the work for the MLP, then maybe he should get the lion's share of, of the credits. You guys sort it out among each other. But congratulations, well done. That's very good. OK, so this is homework number four. Um, there's homework number five. And I screwed up. Um, so yes. So basically what happened is, and I didn't expect this to be the case. Um, so, so remember, there was covariate shift between you know, two classes on one side and two classes on the other side. And it turns out that if you try to classify shirts and sweaters versus sandals and sneakers, that problem becomes ridiculously easy. And I did not expect that it would get quite that easy. I screwed up. So it turns out that even with the most viciously covariate shifted data set where you have 5% of one type and 95 of the other, you can apparently still get around 99% accuracy. Right? I screwed up. OK, so here's the fix. This will require the minimal amount of code change in your homework. You mix cold weather versus warm weather clothes, right? So sneaker plus pullover versus shirt plus sandals. OK. So you now have one top and one bottom item versus another top and bottom item. And that ought to be a considerably harder problem to solve. This is the minimal fix to solving that problem. Okay. Now, obviously, it's un utterly unreasonable to expect you to get this right by the end of the day. Now, since next week, there's no homework anyway. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, you have time until March 5 to submit the updated homeworks. OK. So by the way, if you ran into trouble with the logistic loss otherwise, there is a built-in binary logistic loss in Gluon. So either you need to implement it yourself and make sure it's numerically stable, because log of x of like 100 is NAN is not a number because, well, basically your computer doesn't do infinite numbers very well or very large numbers. So either you use the corresponding binary loss in Gluon or you have to implement it stably numerically on your own. It's totally up to you which of the two you pick, but you need to do one of the two. Okay. So, but short version is I screwed up. So apologies for that. Um, now, project presentations. So this is why there's no homework next uh, Tuesday. So these are the projects that were submitted. And I must say, it's quite amazing. So some of the projects are super ambitious and, you know, they're, they're awesome, right? So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. Uh, there are two projects where we didn't quite know how to classify them. Project number 20, which doesn't have any details, and the ACID project. 
where my fantasy isn't good enough to figure out what to hallucinate there. Um, I guess we'll find out next Tuesday. Oh my god. OK. Very smart observation. OK, so that's the project. Um, that's still no title is, so um, OK. I, I hope we'll find out by next Tuesday what that project's about. So, but overall, I'm delighted to see what the project presentations are going to be. My guess is a whole bunch of those titles will change by the time the lecture happens. Well, as in next week on Tuesday, Mu and I and the TAs will sit in the back and relax. Well, actually not relax, we'll take notes. And you'll get to present. Okay. So now for the logistics of the latter. Uh, don't worry, I'll put this up online. You can download all the details. Um, submissions. You need to submit to that URL with your slides. Okay. You do that by Monday because uh, our poor TAs are humans too and they need to compile that all into one wonderful presentation. So remember the constraints, up to three slides. If you submit more, it will throw anything beyond the third slide away. Even if you, that will get you the Turing Award, we will ignore those slides. It's a hard limit, three slides. Make the font large enough that the guys in the back row can still read it, right? So a normal human in the last row should be able to read it. Don't try to put 100 animations into a single slide, right? So, I mean, yeah, so be reasonable. You can submit it as a Google Drive slide, or in Keynote or PowerPoint, or if you really want to do LaTeX, then yeah, sure, submit it as PDFs. There's a question here, and then after. By Monday? By Monday, okay. yes. So by Monday, you need to have the three slides. You also need to have between one and two pages of a progress report ready, right? The style file is NIP style. The limit of two pages is simply because some human will have to read this. And I want to make sure that you don't submit 20 pages. So that's why the page limit is at two. NIPS font, NIPS formatting guidelines. It's also to make sure you don't spend too much time on it. And you should include more than, hey, we met five times and we had coffee and the coffee was good, right? So include on it stuff like you know, what you want to do, how you think you're going to go about it, which data sets you might want to use, maybe some papers cited that you, where you say, well, we will probably follow a direction similar to such and such. So just like an extended abstract. So it's more that you know, this is one to two pages to convince somebody like me or Mu or Rachel or Ryan that this is going to be a cool project. You don't have to include intermediate results. If you have some, it's awesome, but you don't have to. But it needs to be, by now, a reasonably well-formed project plan. This is to force you to make progress, because otherwise, you'll panic in the end, and then it's like, oh my god, I'm, I'm out of time. Okay. So you had another question, I think. Oh, that was my question. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, Monday. Cool. Okay. Um, so, yeah, and I'll put this up because I don't think anybody can remember this tiny URL. But just, you know, be reasonable in your uh, with your slides and we'll combine it in some meaningful way. Good. Any questions so far? Any other questions? Good. Well, thanks a lot. And again, apologies for my screw up on the homework. Um, I hope cold versus warm weather clothes are going to be a little bit more challenging for logistic regression. I wouldn't have expected that the problem was that easy. Okay, good.